Okay, in this quick video, I just wanted to, to share some of the objects that I've obtained from Shapeways, the 3D printing company, recently. First up, we have this Mobius net, it's called. And it's this very organic looking structure that uh, seems to flow in on itself. Um, it makes me imagine uh, coral and other structures like that. Uh, but this is really in itself a mathematical object, a mathematical curve that they've managed to 3D print. It's quite a fascinating shape. Next we have this hypercube. This is like a squashed hypercube projection. So if you imagine a four-dimensional hypercube uh, projected into a three-dimensional space uh, it, well, to cast a shadow in a three-dimensional space. This is the uh, structure that you would be left with. This interesting object called Gyro the Cube, four cubes nested in inside one another, each of which can rotate independently. So you can you know, play with that for quite a while. And again, uh, these were 3D printed separately and then assembled. But yeah, you can all rotate independently of one another. Next up we have this mathematical object called a 120 cell and you can actually see straight through the middle there on any face you choose. Uh, incredibly complex but structured and ordered object uh, just printed in the white plastic option here. Lots and lots and lots of pentagons all nested one inside the other. And we have this Mobius band, this is printed in alumide, it's like a, a plastic print with aluminium dust or powder. If you can imagine a rod with a square cross section uh, folded in on itself to form this circle but then given a half twist and so it doesn't have four edges, it has only two edges because they curve in on one another. It's an interesting Mobius structure. Also in Alumide we have this basic uh, fractal, it's called a Menger sponge and yeah, just a couple of levels of iterative patterns there that you can make out. Again in Alumide. Uh, then we have this basic DNA structure, the model of the DNA double helix with a major groove and a minor groove. That's how, um, yeah, obviously not atomically accurate, just structurally accurate with the base pairs and the DNA groove itself. And we have this model. This is a gyroid. This is a, a purpley style plastic. Uh, this reminds me of a sponge that you might find in the ocean. And if you look at it certain ways, you get different arrays of six kind of holes through the middle of it. There we go, there's another view of the six holes. Your, your finger kind of naturally wants to go and explore this surface. Yeah, that itself is a interesting little little shape. And we have this model, which is, I've decided to get this printed in black plastic. This is a model of a carbon nanotube. And this is what the, one of these molecular structures might look like. It was blown up. This is just a ball and stick model, of course. You've got the little hexagons there with each little sphere connected to its neighbors. Making this material into all sorts of things from computing to memory to textiles, um, energy applications, energy storage, all sorts of things with this wondrous little carbon nanotube material. Closely related is this Buckyball, it's a model of a, a molecule of Buckminster fullerene. 60 carbon atoms in total, it's shaped like a classic soccer ball shape. Um, again, done with a 3D print. You can see the pentagons there surrounded by hexagons to form that spherical structure. These again have been used in a range of scientific applications. 
using these in next generation memories also as lubricants for micro machines and other structures I also have these 3D printed mazes so this little point here is the start of the maze and then the object is to roll that little ball out through the exit which is in this corner here and you've just got to try and move that around until you can find the pathway out uh, it also comes with these smaller ones as well basically work by the same principle but the smaller ones are a bit easier than the other ones and we have this structure this is called a Hilbert curve again a mathematical object but what I like about this is you can deform it into various ways and it still wants to go back into its original cube cube like shape there and this reminds me of DNA origami where you'll synthesize complementary strands of DNA sequences that when mixed together will self assemble and form um, arbitrary two dimensional three dimensional shapes so you could get you can imagine that each of these rods is a strand of DNA that has been programmed to self-assemble into this cube-like structure and indeed any arbitrary shape that you might want. Then we have this model of a bacteriophage. This is a model of a virus that infects a species of bacteria. In the real world this would all be made out of protein, the whole lot. You have these little legs that would act like um, that particular structure would act like a key that would target a specific species of bacteria's uh, receptors on their cell walls that would be like a lock and when it attaches to the cell wall of the bacteria these legs would contract this shaft would be thrust through the bacterial cell wall and the DNA inside the head here would be injected into bacteria the bacteria would then produce hundreds of thousands if not millions of copies of these viruses. It would then rupture from the offspring it would be set to go and repeat the process. And all of these structures have been 3D printed with plastic powder and a laser. So the basic process is they lay down a layer of plastic powder, a laser comes along and maps out the first slice of the 3D model from the computer another layer of plastic powder is laid down layer <laughs> laser comes along and does the next slice and so on and so forth and so you build up your whole 3D model whole 3D structure uh, layer by layer slice by slice and the resolution from these Shapeways 3D printers is quite good is this amazingly intricate little structure so what we actually have here is two layers of four cubes you can see inside there that are nested within three layers of nine cubes and your fingers can just play with this for ages so this was done in a single 3D print the, in the printer you would have picked this out of some powder got rid of the excess and you'd be left with the structure that you wouldn't be able to manufacture in any other way and yeah, this is just amazingly intricate little structure we also have this this is called a linked Veroni this is quite a delicate ball like structure it does bounce a little bit, it's very light this roll and if you can look in it's got this funny pattern again it looks very organic it does it's very flexible, but it is delicate. I have broken a couple of the little length arms. You wouldn't be able to make this any other way. It kind of gets your imagination ticking over with what might be possible. And that's the main reason I went and acquired these intricate little structures to begin with. Um, there's no real purpose to them. They look interesting. They certainly feel interesting to touch and I guess the main reason I went and acquired them is that they kind of expand your imagination with what might be possible with this 3D printing technology it gives, also gives you ideas 
with what you might also like to try yourself, what 3D objects and structures you might like to create and use. And yeah, I just find it really useful as a creative aid. Gets your mind ticking over. And everyone I've shown these shapes and structures to has been just blown away and amazed that you can actually do such things. Alright, cool. Thanks for watching.